The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Sicilian Corner, winner of the Italian Heritage Media Award, with your hosts, Tom Zappala and Mike Lamazzo. Mikey, my boy, how are you? You know something, T? I can't complain at all. Uh, I just want to wish. You shouldn't be complaining. You shouldn't be complaining this week. I want to wish all the uh, ladies out there a wonderful Valentine's Day. Chrissy? Well, t- it's not Hi. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day was Tuesday. Oh, that's true. We're recording it. Yeah, all you know, you just, you just. Well, like, I'm going to get you, it one of these days. I'm going to get this. Just down don't pat. get it. Yeah, you but just don't get it. Anyway, Valentine's did you, Day. Did you have a good Valentine's Day, Mikey? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he did. He yeah, started I, it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen and I did. Man, we had a great time. Did you? Yeah, you had a martini and some cheese and uh, crackers. We, yeah, we 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 went to uh, Coconuts at the Hilton for a little dinner. Uh, indoor, outdoor, kind of a you know, bar, no, not a fancy restaurant. Um, but no, that was about it. We went to the beach for an hour, hour and a half. Um, What's the weather like, T? Uh, 75, 76. Me, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. full sun, beautiful is right. Yeah. Hey, Mikey, just, or just a point of reference, um, something you may want to consider, like Russ Fakera, uh, he's, he's still a very big sponsor of the show, right? Well, not really, but he used to be. He's a very dear friend. And you know, he supported you really, us for many, 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 many years. years. You should, you know, you know, he's got a uh, a tailor. Consider bringing that sweater uh, to to Russ and take off the Christmas decorations and maybe just put some regular buttons there. What yeah. do you think? Um, this is the trademark of this particular company from Canada. This is what they specialize in. I happen to like it. I like the woodsy look. And <laughs> you, do. you do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you like the woodsy look. Okay, absolutely. that's good. Hey, listen. First of all, welcome to the Great, the Great American Collectible Show. Wow, uh, that's a faux pas. This is saying Corner, Tom Zappler with my big brother, host, co-host, Mikey Lamazzo. We have a good show today. We've got... Looking the forward last to two, it. Yeah, the last two segments, we're bringing in a very dear friend of myself, uh, Mikey's never met him. Uh, he, he knows Chrissy very well. His name is James Fiorentino. little background on James. James is one of the, if not the foremost sports artist in the country, watercolors. However, he doesn't do just athletes. He does all kinds of wonderful watercolors. He's won numerous awards from Italian organizations all over the country. And uh, as I said, we're going to bring James in, kind of talk about his his work, look at some of his work. Very, very talented, talented uh, individual. And I, I just want to mention, you know, uh, I, I did some research on him. And, man, I'll tell you, this guy's been on more TV shows and radio shows. And you name it, man. You, He's mentioned, done... you mentioned the awards. You know something? For a young man? I mean, Jesus. I, Mikey, I, he has been on, I, I mean, I, I can't saw. tell you, he, he's done stuff at the Hall of Fame, Fox Sports, ESPN, Yankee Stadium, I mean, all kinds of great stuff. And again, he, he specializes in sports, but he's got some beautiful, beautiful things. We're going to talk about some of the great Italian athletes that he has done and is friends with, by the way. Hey, Mikey, uh, what'd you think of the Super Bowl? You know something for once? <laughs> For once, I sat back and I really enjoyed it. There are very few games that live up to the hype. I agree. And this one here had momentum. The swings were absolutely incredible. Um, I mean, it kept you right into the game. That game flew by for me. It I, did. I, I agree. I uh, I just thought the world of it. I no, it was a great game. He's such that you know. The kid is really a talented quarterback. Say what you want. Whether you hate him, love him, the kid is one hell of a quarterback. You know, when you have a running quarterback, and he's a big boy, uh, when you have a quarterback that's got a pair of legs underneath him, and even with his condition, I mean, playing with a high sprain, ankle sprain, that's that's not easy to do. That thing is going to linger. And when he got tackled on a run, I saw the way his – foot got twisted. I said, that's it. He's gone. 
And when he got up and limped off to the sideline, I didn't think we were going to see him back in the game. No, he, I, the kid is, he's tough as nails. You know, Mikey, I was watching, <laughs> excuse me, on, uh, I don't know when it was, Saturday night about, I, I couldn't go to bed. I was not tired. So I turned on, uh, I think it was ESPN. Mm-hmm. It could have been YouTube. And I watched the first half of the 1970 Super Bowl between the Baltimore Colts and the Dallas Cowboys. And you know what really stuck out, Mikey? And, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna ask you this question because I think I know what your answer is going to be. I watched guys like Johnny Unitas. Fantastic I, quarterback for the well, Colts. My, hold on. Let me finish. I watched guys like Johnny Unitas. Uh, I watched guys like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the quarterback, but. For Dallas at the time, I can't, oh, it was Craig Morton, I believe. Was a star Mikey, back? No, no, this is this Craig Morton before? in seventy. Okay. Yeah, Mike, I, I honest to God, Mike, I'm not sure that Johnny Unitas could play in the NFL today. What are your thoughts on that? Same thing with the running. The running backs, interestingly enough, the running backs then were as tough as nails, tough as nails, and they would get that three or four yards. I think the running backs could play, but. I, Mike, I don't know, man. You, what are your thoughts? You think some Johnny U wouldn't be able to? I'm not sure he could play in today's. In, it all know, depends like, on what kind of an offensive scheme they're going to run. If it's going to be shot passes and shot passes up the middle, he would be fantastic. He would do fantastic. If he had somebody like an Edelman that's going to catch right in the middle. A guy yeah, that knows you know, he's going to get killed. He's going to yeah, get hit by I, two and people. And I agree. Yeah, he, he definitely couldn't throw the long bomb very well. No, but the other thing I noticed was that his short passes they weren't they weren't real tight. He didn't have a real quick, quick, quick release, though, Michael. Uh, you know something, T. You may be right. I again, I'm 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 going to have to rely on your expertise. I never really timed them, but you can't hold that ball. <laughs> you hold right? that ball three seconds, and you're, you're done. You're, you're yeah. going to get mauled over. You know, and the other thing I watch, by the way, I highly recommend it. I know we, we don't, we're not trying to talk about sports, but if you have Netflix, I highly recommend watching the documentary on Bill Russell. It's a two-part documentary, spectacular. Uh, I gave it four stars. Uh, just, it's amazing as to what kind of a, a, a human being he was, as well as obviously a great ball player. How, much, Mike, is again, Netflix, how much does Netflix cost a month? Uh, it's part of my package. I have no idea. I don't a rough idea? I, guess, I don't know. I Christy, no how idea. much? I, I think it's around the 15. How much? I think 15, 16 15 bucks, bucks a, a month. Yeah. In addition to cable, you got to pay 15 bucks a month? Mike, don't be such a cheap bastard. Why don't you just get it? Well, uh, you know something. I got to do something because the rabbit ears are really wearing I, out. I, really, but anyway, you know, I watched footage of guys like Bob Cousy, guys like Tom Heinsohn. I'm not sure that I, they definitely could not play in the NBA today. No way. These guys are so quick. Yeah, so there's big. no way those guys could play. I looked at only guys from that era that I, I think Chamberlain could play. I think Russell could play, but Russell would be nowhere near as dominant as he was because he was only 6'9". But then I look at some of these other guys, like Sam Jones, who I love, Casey Jones. Those guys, I don't think, could play in the NBA today. Tommy, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, what year did uh, the Jets and Joe Namath uh, play 69. my Green Bay Packers? 69. 69. I, had a, I had this guy working 68. for me. 68. It could have been 68. 68. I had this guy working for me, young kid. No, wait a minute. 67? 69. 69. 69. 69. Yeah. yeah. That was the, it was the third Super Bowl. Third Super Bowl, right. Yeah. Um, I had this kid working for me. His name was Gary Merrill. And I never really cared for him too much, to be honest with you. He nice. was one of these auxiliary volunteer firemen for the town of Bill Ricca. And, you know, he had a pager. And as soon as that pager would go off, and it always seemed to go off on a Friday and on a Saturday, our two busiest days. I think, the, I think the guy was hogging me, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, you know? I think that's pretty funny. And it really, and it really frosted my gulu, to be honest with you. But he was Joe Namath's butt boy. He just loved Joe Namath. And, of course, I had my ties with Green Bay. Yeah. And he says to me, and I think uh, the Jets were 18 point underdogs in that game, a Super Bowl with an 18 point spread. And Joe Namath uh, lives down here, lives about uh, 15 minutes from here. Oh, does he? 
Yeah, and he's always around. I mean, he's very, very personable with everyone. As a matter of fact, he owns a restaurant uh, right up in Jupiter. We have not eaten there yet, but like, evidently he's there quite a bit. Mm. And yeah, he's he's just uh, he's been in uh, he's in uh, on the Jupiter to Questa line, and he has. Uh, He's been here for years, and uh, he's very, very personal with people. Well, what did you to have get back? Mikey, to get you... back to my story yeah. before you rudely interrupted me. Go ahead, go ahead. I just wanted to say, so this kid wants, he wants to bet with me for the game. And there was no way I was going to give him 18 points. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you seven. I got Green Bay, you take Namath. So, of course, he, he wipes me out. He beats me. And... Besides the fact that I didn't care for him and I didn't like him, and I thought he was hogging me with this paging BS that he had going on, he kept on rubbing it in and rubbing it in and rubbing it in. So I had enough. The you, following you week, I, I transferred him to a store, that, <laughs> the father's store that we had that time. That's in terrible. The chain. <laughs> that is freaking terrible. Let him go Honestly. bother somebody else. I don't mind losing, but don't break my chops over it. Did you have uh, any kind of a special, uh, Christy, I'm going to ask you this question too. Did you guys have any special food for Super Bowl? Uh, I was over at Sadie's here, so we had a big like potluck. Everyone brought something. So Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mikey? You know what Sadie's is, Tom? Yeah, I do. It's a it's a uh, restaurant in Salem, New Hampshire, yeah. and yeah. the wonderful Chrissy Boom Boom Cunningham uh, is always uh, appearing there. You know what type of food they uh, they serve, Tom? Huh? Uh, Lebanese. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Very good. They're they Arab. As platter. a matter of fact, they do American fare as well. They actually their burgers are fantastic as well. But I love Lebanese I, food. Lebanese I love food. Lebanese food, and we just found finally a good Lebanese restaurant down here. Oh, oh really? Oh, the Aladdin. And we had it uh, delivered the other night. It was great hummus, great tabbouleh. The lamb was a little shaky, but uh, chicken shawarma was good. The uh, what do they call those round ball things? Uh, oh, falafel. A kibbe. No, uh, falafel. Uh, falafel. Yes, falafel. falafel. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell great. you who's been consistent for years: the Phoenician. I agree. Uh, and, and shoddies too. And, sh- and shoddies too. I don't go down to shoddies because it's. Uh, it's not my territory, to be yeah. honest with you. But uh, the Phoenician, I like going. I like sitting down. I like the lamb chops. Lamb chops are Their fabulous. French fries are just as good as what they used to get at Bishop's. They really Chrissy, are. Chrissy, does Sadie's have lamb chops? Uh, they do not, no. They, they, but they have like lamb kebabs and things like that. She, uh, she doesn't really do a lot of lamb, to be honest. She keeps it in the beef, chicken kind of family, and then lots of vegetarian. Really? No stuff. lamb? No. That's no. odd. Hell kind of a Lebanese yeah. restaurant is it? Whoa. Who? That's my family you're talking about there. You take that term down, <laughs> I'm sir. Sorry. I'm sorry. Good when point. You, hey, when you, when you dabble in everything, you can't be a master of like one thing. And she is incredible at what she does do. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Tom, what I, was I love your, it. What she's was your only fa- one woman. She can only cook so much food for everybody, and she, yeah. it's incredible. It's incredible. She, you say she's a peach. So wait a second. Oh, is, she, you, is a, she, she is a, what do you call them? I don't know the right term, a spitfire. She is a, just a firecracker. So Sadie woman. is the cook? Yeah. Oh, so that's like Antoinette. So if she gets sick, they're screwed. And the same thing with... with oh, she's uh, been teaching the family. The family comes and cooks as well with her, but she's, she's, she's still doing it herself. So guess what? When I come home, we're going to have to do a din-din for the gang at Sadie's on the tab of Mike Lamazzo. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful. you, Mike. He did a ride on the Super Bowl right here, so he can afford it. What was your favorite? I want to ask no, you. No, 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 Mike. She's just hitting what on was, a point that, that we need to address. <laughs> we don't have to address uh, nothing. We no, don't have this, to. No, the no. The IRS is I'm, listening. Stop I'm talking. Getting, I'm, starting to, I'm starting to, I think I'm going to report you to the FBI or something. The There's FBI. something going on. There's something going on with magnets again. Now, you uh, went to the Encore Casino. Uh, we, were, we were there uh, a couple of days last week. Yep. And again... For the 400th week in a row. No, no, no. That's not true. Don't say things like that because that's, you, a, that's false. You hit, it, you hit it pretty damn good. Uh, then, you know, I, 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 let me say this to you. When I first got there, yep. Tommy, I couldn't do a thing. I sat there, and it was like just throwing money away. It really was. I, I, I was ice cold, and I realized it. Mikey, I, and, Mikey, Mikey. And I realized it. So you know what I did? What's the bottom me? line, Mike? What the I bottom did, line? Did you walk mind away the with money? Line. Let me tell yeah. you my story. I just got up. I said, okay, I'm down 100 and a half. Bye-bye. See you later. I allowed myself $200. <laughs> 
You're kidding me. You're killing me here. So you're don't say me. I win all the time. I okay, don't. okay. After the hundred and a half, you went back in. What did you walk out with? That was at night I went back in. <laughs> what did you walk out with? I did all right. I, okay. It, oh, oh, it was over a thousand. Well, I had one jackpot that I hit to pay fifteen hundred. Okay. So wait a second. It's you're over a thousand. Then you walk over to the betting booth. It was the funniest thing. No, I have to. You have to picture this, T. We have about a minute. All right. You know, I I don't bet like that. I mean, the biggest bet I ever make on sports, Chrissy, is like fifty-five to make fifty. That's it. So the girl comes over. I says, take the tax out. She hands me $1,200. I cash out of the machine. I stand up. It's like somebody was calling me. I walked real quickly. <laughs> I walked real quickly over to the sports bar at the Encore. They have the betting booth. I walked up. I turned around. I took $1,000 of the 1200 that she gave me. I feathered it out, and I says, I'll take Kansas City in the point and a half. And she printed me out the ticket, which I sent to you to show another, you. Another 1200 you won. Oh, I, I, even money. It was an even a deal. Thousand. You won yeah. a grand. Yeah, but they held and back. And they take you their know, they, VIG. They held $52, uh, yeah, $48 for VIG. VIG. But, nice. you know, some right, listen. are very fortunate, very lucky. I can quick consider break. myself. As a matter of fact, we're going to bring James. Oh, technical oh, difficulties. Looks like he froze up. I'll tell oh, you what. Why there don't... he is. He's back. You You're froze. Back? Me? Yeah. yeah, you first. So what are we going to do? We're going to bring James in? I think we're going to bring James in uh, right at the break. And then, Mike, with the money you have, you should buy a painting. I should get two. Right. All right go. We're going to take a quick break. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Ciao, this is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant-style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand-selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts, cheeses, and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state, as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscar Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao! Today. 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 Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. Italian artisan cuisine combines simple, fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb, while a pasta maker creates fresh fettuccine. More than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603-952-4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience artisan Italian. Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine is pleased to announce the opening of their American College of Radiology accredited MRI unit at their location at 16 Bellum Road in Salem, New Hampshire. So now, in addition to receiving the best orthopedic care in the Merrimack Valley, as well as physical and occupational therapy at Optima Sports Therapy and Rehab, you can also have your MRI all in one convenient location. The doctors and staff of Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine have been dedicated to providing outstanding medical care. 
to the Merrimack Valley in southern New Hampshire since 1984. Located on Route 97, just off Exit 2 from Route 93 North, on the second floor of the Workout Club of Salem. You deserve the best care, and that's exactly what you'll get from the board-certified surgeons at Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine. Please call 603-898-2244 to schedule an appointment. A loyal sponsor for the Sicilian Corner is Hilton Oil Company. Hilton Oil has been located right across from the South Lawrence Common since 1932 at 101 South Union Street. Hilton Oil Company specializes in 24-hour burner service, oil deliveries, including automatic deliveries serving all the Merrimack Valley area, plus portions of southern New Hampshire. If you want your car fixed right the first time, bring it to Hilton's state-of-the-art service station. Remember, Hilton's is also a mass state inspection station. Hilton Oil Company, 101 South Union Street in Lawrence. Call 978-687-9793. This is Cindy. And Mike Kunsla. Owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazia Italian Restaurant in Drakeett, Massachusetts. Grazia Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? In addition to the spectacular views overlooking the golf course, we have an incredible new chef, Oscar Figueroa. We still have all the favorites, but Oscar has created a lot of excitement with his new specials. Scallops, see it to perfection. House-made ravioli with farm fresh local corn. And buttery tender lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. You have to come experience Grazia Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazia Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see, see you, you soon. soon. Okay, we are back. And I am pleased. Uh, this this guy is a is a great kid. Uh, we have a little history now. Uh, good friend of uh, myself and Ellen and Rico and John Mallory and Chrissy and David. Mike, you don't know him, but that's okay. It's a pleasure uh, to meet you, James. James hey, James Fiorentino. James, how are you, brother? Good. How are you guys? Good. 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 You look uh, you look very uh, European today. <laughs> yeah, that's a Italian show, right? Right, exactly, exactly. James, um, I want before we, we get into the amazing work that you do, let's, how about a little bit, bit of your background? Um, you know, how, how long have you been painting? I, this is something that you don't learn. I mean, it's a God-given talent. When did you re- realize that, hey, you know something, I'm pretty good at this? Yeah, and, and, and I could tie this all in with the Italian heritage, really, because I, you know, I sort of believe that's – where uh, obviously a lot of this came from, because I was drawing ever since I can remember, you know, very, very young, um, you know, taking private lessons at eight years old, painting everything I can, you know, get my hands on. And, you know, my grandmother painted. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm mostly Italian and, you know, the Fiorentino side, you can even trace it back to Italian Renaissance. And, you know, so it obviously is a, a God-given talent, blessed, was able to paint all the time. So it really, really started at a very young age, painting, you know, honestly, every just everything I loved, uh, which is sort of what you know I've been doing now, and obviously the sports stuff, which I'm and the you know the most known for. But it, it definitely was something I've always felt like, maybe in my Italian blood and my heritage, and then obviously being able to work on it all the time since I was a very young kid. <clears throat> Mikey, it's interesting. I was reading up on you, James, and uh, you were at one point three years old considered to be a protege right and you you were able to paint and you know do a human uh, 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 not the facial but you were able to draw like a human being and at three years old tommy think about that i mean that's mind-boggling i couldn't do it at 12 (laughs) i can't do it now i still do the stick people i'm good at that i'm good at stick people but i i give you you know something it's something you've been blessed you've been blessed and i think you realize that and, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And, and to be able to create, I was looking at some of your paintings. We're going to see some in a little while. Uh, it's incredible. I, again, I, I salute you because I wish I had a little bit of that. Just a little bit, not much, just a little bit. Uh, I, have not, I have no skills at all when it comes to that. How about you, Tommy? You ever take painting? Nah, I sucked at that. That was, please, that was ridiculous. No. But, you know, James... Uh, what we've learned, and uh, Ellen and I have done a couple of events with James uh, uh, in the sports world, um, your pedigree with 
you have worked with some of the most amazing athletes uh, that have ever played various sports. Can you take us through some of the relationships you have with some of the great athletes over time? Yeah. And again, it's kind of cool because really some of the earliest guys were, were Italian, Italian Americans. And, you know, so again, starting at a very young age, painting in every medium, all the work you'll see today is watercolor. I've painted in every medium, but watercolor has been my thing. I, I, I feel like that is something that I have mastered. I am mastering, you know, uh, again, doing this for 30 years. But, you know, my passion and love for sports and being an athlete, obviously, and growing up really is what, you know, how what started it all. And at 14, as a collector, and this goes back to the collecting side of it, obviously, I, I ended up having uh, the great Joe DiMaggio sign that painting when I was 14, which I still have today. Wow. Now, is that and, the one over your right shoulder? No, this is a newer one. I just happened to bring okay. that in. That's a black and white DiMaggio. But I, I do have upstairs... Um, it's about 11 by 14 size painting. And I always tell the story how I'm a 14 year old. I'm in line. People are like, oh, you know, he's, you know, he could be surly. He's not going to sign it. It's a pretty big thing. And of course, Joe signs it. And then eventually DiMaggio would ask me to do a project with him years later, you know, after he had signed the Ted Williams 20 greatest hitters that he was on for me. But it was at that very young age at 14 and then 15, having the painting in the National Baseball Hall of Fame, making me the youngest artist Boy. growing up here in New Jersey, getting that local media which was obviously new york and new jersey and getting on new york media was a big deal but at 15 i started to become friendly with these players from events and shows and yogi berra you know another great italian american um kind of took me under his wing and brought me to his house and was signing the first prints i had ever wow. made of, of him that's very cool yeah yeah nice. and um you know i remember literally going to his house with my parents and um and, and really even starting a little relationship with phil rizzuto um this year gosh i'm thinking of how many years ago so this has got to be you know 25 years ago you know being at yogi's event meeting rizzuto and then eventually uh being part of phil rizzuto's golf tournament which was always attached to the ed lucas foundation now of which uh, the last 10 years i've been on this board but it became rizzuto then gene michael now david Cohn. but you know again three italian american ball players all hall of famers all incredible guys who were really good to me at that age when i was like 15, you know 14 15 16 years old when i was starting out i mean oh. you know again <laughs> well we're going to talk about you have a big event coming uh, at the philadelphia sports collectible show and you know something i think we're going to deviate a little bit i know that uh, david has some images that he's going to be posting we can be all over the place i i just you know, we don't have to be in any kind of order because your work is so good. David's just going to post it. Um, no need to, to try to have things in order. But what is your one favorite piece? Well, you know, I love, you know, and this is just as an artist in general. I mean, you'll and you'll see it as it comes up throughout the show, like you mentioned. But my my landscapes, you know, my everyday life portraits, my landscapes and even my wildlife. When I have an opportunity, it's probably really wanting to do a lot of that. As far as sports is concerned, I think it'll always be the Ted Williams 20 greatest hitters. I think doing that at 17 for Ted Williams and having, you know, the greatest ball players of all time, uh, autographing that original, having it there at the museum at the time, there were over 50, 60 Hall of Famers. You know, that's a pretty historical and important event. It was the largest painting I'd ever done at 17 years old. Now, where is that piece now? That's in a private collection. Uh, but we had it at the National Sports Convention. You saw it like I did uh, see it. Yeah, and and so you know, again, that's going back years ago. You know, over twenty five years ago when I had done that, um, and, and that I think all those projects, like I had mentioned, the Hall of Fame and the Ted Williams and Yogi, all led to eventually having Cal Ripken pick me as the uh, official artist when he broke the streak, which was a big deal, and. You know, that's what led me on to like all the, the, the bigger projects and national media coverage and national media. And, and even I was telling you before, like, you know, even Italian American stuff, I remember being interviewed by Time, Italy's Time magazine. And it's always funny because my grandfather at the time was able to read it. And they, they compared me to like a young Mario Cuomo. There was a lot of funny stuff in it. But <laughs> um, yeah, it's just starting very young and getting all this attention, being in the right place at the right time, being in a good area. And, you know, besides being blessed, working very hard, you know, Tom, I'm, I paint every day. I've been painting every day for the last 30 years. So, um, you know, it's really getting your work out there and your name out there, which I've done for a long time. Mikey, where did your inspiration come from? Uh, what, what led you in that direction? I believe you said your, 
your nana was a, a painter. Uh, did you pick up from her, watching her and her style? Did you try to mimic what she was doing? Or did you decide to do something on your own and, and go to watercolor? One thing about watercolor, all you have to do is wash your brushes with water, right? I mean, it's <laughs> nice and easy. Nice and easy. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. So I learned every medium growing up. My grandmother painted more very – what's the, I'm trying to get the word. It was more like a Grandma Moses, more antique-looking okay. and oil. Okay. So – um, but I would paint with her all the time. There, certainly being able to work all the time in any kind of environment is a great thing. And, and I was probably painting, even back then, oils and acrylics and different things. My love for watercolor became evident when I was studying with these two women when I was about, I'd say between 8 and 14. Both were really tremendous watercolor painters. Okay. So I think studying with them and just really loving the medium and then it became self-taught. So it's the hardest medium to paint in by far because you can't make a mistake. So uh, that's the key. Yeah. yeah it, it it's the fastest, but like oils and acrylic, you can mess up a hundred times, go over it a hundred times. When you're painting watercolor is boom on the paper done. You better be quick and get it done. So that's why what I do, even like professionals and, you know, people have been painting for a long time and teachers will see my watercolor and almost not think it's watercolor. They think it's acrylic or something or so it's this self-taught style that I've photorealism, this detail, this grit you see in the artwork is something that I think I created on my own, but took things from all different teachers all around that time when I was younger. You're not really a finesse painter. Uh, you kind of just let it fall. You interpret what you're looking at and paint accordingly, correct? Yeah, I mean, so my, my brain's definitely wired for that. So it's like working from certain imagery. I will change things. So I will change up colors and backgrounds and different things. I think for... You know, the non-sports stuff, I'll have, I'll be sketching, I'll have ideas, I'll take my own pictures, I'll incorporate things, I'll, I'll really, you know, create a lot of stuff that people probably don't really see in the artwork unless, you know, they knew. But I certainly imagery is a huge thing when you're painting something real, especially something historical. Um, that's why the more detail in something, the more I love, you know, doing that, All you know. Yeah, Tommy? J James, do you get commissioned to do non-sports uh, paintings often? I do. So although, again, nationally, I'm very well known for the sports, you know, big time. You but, think? <laughs> <laughs> but even the, the wildlife now, you know, the wildlife has been in many museums and galleries the last 10, 15 years all around the country and even all around the world. Um, some of the landscapes as well. I do get commissioned to do a lot. So and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you, going back to sports art, I get asked probably weekly by artists, sports artists, people all around the country for um, advice and I paint everything. So I'll be commissioned to do sometimes a family portrait. I'll be commissioned to do, um, mayors and governors and, and obviously congressmen and different things like that. I'll be commissioned to do for an organization, um, maybe at the building or the landscape. So beyond the portrait that is, can be non-sports, obviously it'll go into all those things. And I've worked with obviously tons of wildlife organizations uh creating our work for them so yeah it's 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 an eight i mean i don't even know maybe it's an 80 percent sports thing 75 percent sports thing while maybe 25 percent in the year is other things it could even be more than that but it, there is a lot of non-sports stuff uh, going on throughout the year we well, are chatting with yep. james fiorentino uh artist extraordinaire and by the way if you want to go on to uh james's website just uh, google james fiorentino and it'll just it, it'll come right up Fabulous, fabulous website. All right, so you have uh, – you're going to be at the – there's a big event uh, in Philadelphia. It's the Philadelphia Sports Collectible Show. We have been there in the past, but this is a special event. Can you tell us about uh, what you're going to be doing and who you're going to be working with? Yeah, this is obviously uh, an exciting time for me because I'll be unveiling Fiorentino Elite, and obviously the Italian name is right there. <laughs> and these are uh, – these are paintings that 22 by 30 inch large paintings that I've been creating for the last two years. And they're all legendary athletes in every sport. But the beautiful thing is they're autographed. They're one of one paintings. Um, you know, obviously debuting them at the Philly show is the same thing I did with There's Only One, uh, the oldest trading card show in the country, a wonderful event um, that some of those paintings will then go on to um, a gallery in New Jersey studio seven fine art gallery and the nice thing about that that show will be not only will you see some of theirs only one the trading card pieces and you'll see the elite, 
but you'll see the things we just spoke about. You'll see some portraits, some some landscapes, some wildlife. So it'll almost be sort of a little retrospective, not quite, but you'll have an opportunity in May and June uh, to see all of my work in one, one place. James, do you do a lot of work, private work for professional athletes? I do. So again, throughout 25 years, it comes up all the time. I mean, I, I, every year I'll present artwork to, um, so several ways. Sometimes the players will come to me directly and ask me for artwork, which happens. Sometimes the teams will, uh, to, to ask me to paint an original that'll go to the player. Um, every year for 20 years, I've painted a, a horse racing piece for an event in Saratoga, which goes to the top jockey owner trainer. That's been un- unbelievable because, again, it's the best of the best ever and current. Um, Latino Sports, which is now um, a sponsored Major League Baseball award. I've been presenting uh, my original artwork as an award to those players, which has mostly been the MVPs over the last probably 15, 20 years, who have been the greatest players in baseball, happen to be Latino. So. There's been a lot of players who have um, who have my my works in their collection and who, who commission me also, and a lot for their charities. That's another big thing too for charity organizations that they they run. Mm. Mikey, I uh, I noticed uh, you played shortstop in high school, and you wait were- a second, hold on. He, <laughs> according to James, he was all he was all state the greatest. He was the greatest shortstop in the history of New Jersey high school. And baseball. he told me the same thing. It's just amazing. <laughs> hey, listen, the, the, the point of my question is this. Since you played baseball and you're an avid fan and you were damn good at shortstop, from what I'm reading, do you seem to focus more on baseball players uh, to do paintings of more than, say, football? Yeah, it's a good question. So I do think that playing sports all my life. So I played football, baseball, basketball growing up. Okay. Obviously, it was baseball was my main sport. All state shortstop, and I played in college. So I played four years in college at Drew University. But, and Tom, I'll know this too. So, besides obviously loving baseball the most and having such a passion for it, I do love painting every other sport um, hockey, golf, baseball, basketball, and a lot of college, even completely non traditional, you know, big time sports. I think baseball happens to be the most collectible side of it. Um, that's interesting. You know, no matter what you do, baseball is always the biggest. It'll always be the biggest as far as collectors, maybe because it has the most history, maybe because most people have played it at some point in their life. So a lot of my work is really always happening to be commissioned work. So it's hard to, um, get a lot of chances to paint anything but that at times. But again, the elite, you'll see a lot of hockey, basketball, football, you know, Mikey, I, uh, I wanted to ask him, Tom, just to follow up. The, when you say commission, the, the word commission, can you define that to our listening audience? Is it like the Clementi family will approach you to do something? Is that what that right. yeah. definition? Yeah, and a lot of private clients, too. So, you know, if I get a chance and I'm able to paint, let's say, a sports painting, you know, maybe I'll do a Babe Ruth or a Mickey Mantle or somebody I'm excited to paint or a DiMaggio. Um, but most of the time, it's it's mostly private clients who are, who are high-end collectors who want my work, whether it's from the smaller end side to the obviously larger size paintings. And it's people who just want to literally collect them, hang them up. Some people buy them as investments. Some people buy them as collectors. But it's mainly that. And, and, and in that commission side of it, uh, whether it's an organization or a private client or a player, you know, they're telling me obviously what they want. There are times where I do get a chance, like I was mentioning, uh, to paint something I love. And, and a lot of times it'll probably be non-sports because I'm painting so much sports, but it's a beautiful thing. I mean, the good, bad thing is, listen, when you're painting commissions, you got to paint what people want. Sometimes maybe you don't want right. to paint it. But, you know, you're making money. That's the beautiful thing. I think when you have an, uh, an opportunity to paint stuff you love, I slide it in. I'm certainly not going to complain because I'm blessed that I've been painting professionally. It's the only thing I've ever done my whole life. No and question. in the last two years, Tom will know this sort of, sports world has blown up and then obviously i'm on the art side of it which is also blown up separately so you got art and the combination of sports so the last two years i mean i've, I've been booked out for almost a year or longer with everything that i'm doing Amazing. james it, it, it's you know and again from behind the scenes folks uh you know I, we know a lot about what james is doing uh you know we we, we talk quite a bit and it's it's mind-boggling james i mean you really are in demand and mike a quick story yeah. last year at the national sports collectors convention um, which is the, the largest convention in the country. I don't know, 25,000 people over the weekend. Wow. 
We were broadcasting the Great American Collectible Show. On I remember. Purpose, I remember that yeah. on the main stage, and uh, James uh, was a guest of ours. Did a segment and surprised Rico, and I'm sure David will post it. Surprised Rico with an absolutely gorgeous uh, watercolor of which I don't remember. It was one of his baseball cards. I don't remember what year. It may have been '69 or '70. Just a gorgeous watercolor of Rico's baseball card. It was just fantastic, fantastic. Um, which uh, it's quite a talent. Was, quite a talent. He still, he still talks about that, uh, James, uh, all the time. Uh, and by the way, uh, we're going we're, we're to take a break in a minute. But you know, another guy that absolutely uh, loves your work, and I think he's a pretty good customer, is Derek Grady from Heritage Auctions. Yeah, uh, you know, I know that uh, he's bought quite a few. He raves about your work, uh, you know. So, that's yeah, another... I've been lucky, lucky to have some amazing people over the years, and and guys like him are a huge influence in in the hobby and 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 things like that. So, yeah, once you start getting people like that, that's a really great thing. Excellent. We are chatting with uh, James Fiorentino, uh, just a superb, superb artist. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we have one more segment, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about. They hated New York Yankees. Hang in there. We'll be right back. <laughs> Ciao. This is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant-style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand-selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts, cheeses, and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscott Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao. This is David from the Sicilian Corner. You know, Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach, but we love different things and can never agree where to go. Tom likes the casual family style dining with the great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Kitchen and Pizzeria. Me? I love the elegant romantic vibe Sea Glass with the amazing view and terrific menu with prices that make it the place you want to visit each and every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of a cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites, and the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Concert Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is the host of all of these great places and they treat everyone like they are Mike Lamazzo. Best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once and all this fun is right at your fingertips. You can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappala. Located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, the Haverhill Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Haverhill Beef offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy chairman reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important Important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Debra Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Debra Care Law Offices today in Massachusetts, 978-686-4645, in New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. 
At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. This is Cindy and Mike Kunsler, owners and operators of Four Oaks Country Club and Grazi Italian Restaurant in Drakeet, Massachusetts. Grazi Italian Restaurant is the hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. Why is that? In addition to the spectacular views overlooking the golf course, we have an incredible new chef, Oscar Figueroa. We still have all the favorites, but Oscar has created a lot of excitement with his new specials. Scallops, see it to perfection. House-made ravioli with farm fresh local corn buttery, tender, lazy man's lobster, just to name a few. You have to come experience Grazi Italian Restaurant for yourself. Grazi Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club, 80 Meadow Creek Drive in Drake, Massachusetts. Hope, Hope to, to see, see you, you soon. soon. Okay, we are back. We are chatting with our good friend, James Fiorentino. Uh, I consider him the best sports artist in the country, but I'm biased. But well, anyway. you know something? I, I don't know much about the, uh, the paintings and, in that industry, but, man, what I looked at was freaking unbelievable. Pretty damn good. I, I, gotta t- I, did, I do have a question, Tom, before we get into the Yankees. Yeah. Uh, James, <clears throat> the, President Bush, senior President Bush, what was it like to paint for a president of the United States? Did they come to you or did you go to them? Um, in that case, I went to them. It, it all depends on the situation, but I had seen him at several events over the years, one of which he hosted the um, Ted Williams 20 Greatest Hitters. And um, also a gentleman I knew um, was doing all of his autograph signings. So um, I knew obviously he was such a big baseball fan. So to be able to have some painting signed um, – and and then obviously give I actually gave him one of the reproductions of uh, another sports piece of mine, and he was such a big Ted Williams guy and friend of Ted. It was it was amazing, and, oh, and even damn, being man. able to paint. I was actually asked to paint his son, um, which is kind of a crazy story. But I was actually supposed to present that. I think it was a week after nine eleven, oh. and it all got canceled. The painting ended up getting to him, and the other painting of um, of the president Barbara Bush was in their president's presidential library. So I've been and, and I've been able to meet a lot of guys like that, whether it's, you know, President Biden, where I presented a painting to through an event or uh, Congressman John Lewis, uh, just just amazing historical people beyond the sports side of it. Interesting. You know, that, you know, something that Ellen and I uh, a couple of years ago, I don't know if it was pre-COVID or post-COVID, uh, right down here in Palm Beach, uh, Judge, Judge W is a uh, he's an artist himself. And we yeah, went to an really? exhibition. Yeah, he it was it was you know, he's not bad, uh, but it was good. He did it. It was on uh, heroes, American heroes, but it was it was good. I think they were oils, but you know, the hell do I know? Tommy, I, I don't think you know this, but I've done some watercoloring too. You know. Oh, here we go. <laughs> go ahead. I want to hear no, this. Well, I haven't told you about this. Oh God, no, Mike. I love James. To hear what it. do you work with? Do you work with pans? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait. Uh, with what? Pans. Pans. pans, yeah, okay. pans. A little trays of ink, <laughs> right? Paint, right? Right, right. Yep. They call so, them, Mike. What do they, you work? They with? call me. I use tubes, <laughs> and I find that I can express myself more with the tubes than I can using a brush in the pans. So you and, just you don't use brush, and then you use your hands. You and don't. You to use yeah, because I don't like my hands to get dirty. So that's why I use the tubes. And gotcha. it really comes out pretty good. They're a little I'm different. Sure. It takes a I'm while sure. to understand what I'm trying to do. but <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it does. Okay. We are chatting with James Fiorentino. <laughs> hey, James, by the way, before we talk, do some Yankee talk, um, there's a rumor circulating. I don't know who started it. Tom Zappler. But, that, but there's a possibility of a book of your artwork that's going to be coming out, in the ne- not the near future, but in the future. Can you shed a little light on that? Knock on wood. Let's hope so. So this is something that's been planned, obviously, and probably, let's say, very influenced by Tom's great books now over the, the years here. Uh, yeah, I've been asked for many, many years to obviously do books on my artwork, whether it's all sports or baseball. And I think it's the right time with, I think, again, beyond the 
art side of it, just seeing a beautiful painting, it's all the stories I can share. And I think that's what most artists don't have. And again, starting at a, at a very young age. So if all goes to, to plan here, I would love for there to be a, a beautiful baseball coffee table book done by next summer. That's the, the goal. Let's see if that can happen. I think, I think it can. So listen, have you ever considered, oh, and by the way, you still have an open invitation from Rico and I, and now Mike, this summer, We'd love you to come to Boston, and the four of us will go to a Red Sox game. Uh, with Rico's connections, we'll wind up probably in the 50th row of the bleachers. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, you're, you're more than welcome to come. Have you ever been to Fenway? Been to Fenway many times, yeah. Really, it's, it's obviously one of the greatest uh, uh, parks and really sports places you could be, you know? You know, it's, fun, it's funny. When you go to a Red Sox game with Petroselli, it's an experience, man. Really, it's really, yeah. It's it's uh it's an experience. He, you can't walk ten feet, ten feet without you know Rico, somebody rec- hey. recognizing him. Oh yeah. God, it's funny. He's got it's the really... personality for it too. Oh yeah, of course he does. So James, <clears throat> have you ever thought about coming over to the dock side here at uh, with the Red Sox? <laughs> uh, that that I can't do, but I will say this: I am absolutely a baseball sports fan, so I can appreciate. You know, any team. So, again, the problem for me is I get to meet these guys and paint them. So if you're hanging with Poppy or Garcia Pera or obviously paying Ted Williams, it's hard not to want to root for these guys, right? But when they play the Yankees, no shot. You know? So, why? I mean, you, you brought up a Yankee fan. Why never the Mets? Why are there so few Mets fans? Where do they come from? Well, when I was growing up, so the Mets, let's see, uh, in 86, when they won the World Series, I'm nine years old. So that was very popular. So, like, I think a little kid, you're kind of going back and forth, you know, because you're kind of finding your way. But my mom was a huge Yankee fan. Okay. So my mom loved Mantle, loved Maris. And then, again, my grandfather would talk about DiMaggio. So at that time, Mattingly becomes my baseball god there. You know what I mean? So even though the, the Mets were winning the World Series, it just I think it was all – Sort of there, maybe the pinstripes with the Yankees, well, and the Mets too. But yeah, it just just was. I just fell in love with the Yankees and the history of it. And uh, again, my mom was probably a huge influence in it. And um, and obviously now, growing up, being around these guys, like it was just around Mattingly a couple weeks ago. It's, you know it's Ray Schulte, right? You know Ray. I do know Ray very well. Yeah, isn't Ray his agent? Yeah, yeah, well, and, I, yeah. And, and and Ray goes back. So again, going back to Mattingly and the Yankees, I I did the cover artwork and the official artwork for when Don uh, retired with the Yankees and they retired his number. I was down in Yankee Stadium with Mattingly that day. I was I think eighteen. So again, going all the way back that many years with Ray, Ripken and Mattingly. So hmm. Ray's a great guy. Ray was really good, really good to Ellen and I in the early days. I'm going back 15, 16 years ago in the early days of uh, uh, doing book signings and attending the National. He used to kind of take us under his wings because we didn't know what the hell we were doing at the time. And, and he was great, and him, him and John Brogy. And uh, now uh, a good dear friend of yours, really dear friend of yours, and a good friend of Ellen and I, uh, is taking over the national in 2024. We talked about it, uh, and we're really excited about uh, about that happening. Uh, so, uh, that's going to be it's going to be interesting. Uh, we are chatting with uh, James Fiorentino. James, what are you working on right now? Right now, I'm working currently on uh, one of the elite pieces. Actually, another paisan. I'm painting Dan Marino right now. Oh wow! So that's an autograph piece. He already signed it, and I'm fi- finishing up all the details. So again, uh, there's that's an ongoing series, the elite painting. So I'll, I'll mix in um, that. Probably another trading card piece we'll have at, at the uh, Philly show, and then you know maybe uh, a non sports piece, and then back to the sports pieces. Now. Uh- Obviously, uh, in between your your beautiful work that you do, you're schlepping kids around, correct? How many kids? Yes. I mean, are they playing sports? I mean, are you are they all over the place? Yeah, they're doing it all. So very blessed and lucky. I have a nine year old, two two boys, nine and thirteen, who are playing basketball right now. They've already started their winter baseball workouts. This is not like when we were kids, or <laughs> it's like. They're, they're practicing before the guys even hit spring training in the majors. It's crazy, but Amazing. they love it. They really enjoy it. They're both good athletes, both really good kids, you know, very smart, good people, which is the most important. And now they get to come 
you know, to events with me, and they've been meeting a lot of players uh, in recent years. So that's, that's very sort of cool. getting excited. Oh, yeah. yeah getting that's excited. very, very, very cool. How many hours do you figure you spend per day uh, painting? You have- Mikey, that's two good questions from you today. I'm very impressed. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've always tried to make it a nine-to-five type of okay. job. You keep it straight. I do paint kind of seven days a week, but I'm not painting every hour because I'll paint 20 minutes, half an hour, then I'll go to the computer, then I'll ship something out, then I'll have a meeting, then I'll do this and I'll be back, pick up the kids. But I pretty much paint every day, you but know, you can and get, it's been you, like that. You can get up in the middle of something and walk away and be gone for half an hour, 40, come back and be exactly oh, what you Mikey, you do the same thing when you're playing a slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. I, it, and I'll tell you, it's... Uh, you don't even know how you do it. Even sometimes when you approach these paintings, even for me, I'm like, man, how am I going to do this or start this? But yeah, you have to, because again, I'm working on paintings. Some paintings could take two, three days. Some could take seven to 10 days. Depends on the detail, the size and how much is involved. So you just come right back to it and restart it all over again in your, in your head. I just, hey, want to, I just want to ask you one quick question. Working with watercolor, it dries very, very quickly. So if you do make a mistake, can you paint over what you did? No, not okay. really. Okay. There's there's tricks in that uh, you can blot stuff up, do a little bit, you know, because again, like I use both to get not too technical, very heavy watercolor paper. Actually, it's, a, it's Italian paper. It's Fabriano. It's a 300 pound hot Beautiful, paper. dude. The so, best paper you can get. Absolutely. And, you know, so if you make a mistake, it's not like, again, oils where it's opaque. Well, there is opaque watercolor and translucent. I use both, but you can't go, if you have a dark, watercolor paint down you're not going over that like white's not gonna so you're kind of done so in all honesty knock on wood here like i really don't mess up much i think that's just from being from doing it for so long and and knowing where to start where to finish and all those kind of things as far as yeah so his his name is james fiorentino james real quickly your website address it's jamesfiorentino.com and and from there you'll find all the you know, Facebooks and Instagrams and LinkedIn's and this. And, and you can buy, I mean, what do they call chiclets, chiclies? Uh, yeah, I do have limited edition G clays, which are reproductions from the originals. Um, they're, they're throughout the site and the store and other, other things. And obviously originals are available and can be commissioned. Awesome. James, as always, man, we love you. Uh, we, we talk a lot and I love talking to you. So does Ellen. Uh, Mallory sends his best. Uh, and with that being said, uh, we'll talk to you down the road. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, guys. James, hey, I, hope, I hope I get a chance to meet you uh, maybe come this summer. If you come Mike, down just have your, Make sure you have your wallet, Mikey. Make sure you have your wallet. <laughs> All right, listen, though, we're just about out of time. Mikey, boy, have a great week. Thank you. Same uh, to you. Chrissy, thanks for another wonderful job. And to our viewers and listeners, remember, if you can't make fun of yourself, please do not make fun of anyone. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Have a great week. Audio The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.